I want to test the image tag because the right. iframe might work <laughs> even if they uh, deny it in the in the ten image. So the same ID image. Yeah, but it's just uh, unfortunately the HTML image is just IMG. IMG. Yeah, I guess I can make a fix like for that? it sometime. Yeah. <coughs> you can place it, but you got to set the source in the next line. But you got it in with a colon instead of the uh, comma. Equals. Yeah. What colon? Button line nine, not that. Because well. you're setting the value, so you're done with that. No colon there, see how like line 13 there's no colon with the JPEG. But your image tag has to say there's more stuff underneath, but no comma. No comma there either. It's not, yeah, you didn't say anything afterwards. So you see the image behind? Yeah. Because you, you built it <coughs> first to nine, then you built the iframe. Yeah. But if you switch the order, then the image will be on top of the iframe. So it's like the background. Yeah. And it auto size. Like the image tag has a property of being the size of the image when you load it. But you can say width equals 100%. And it'll stretch it. Like in your image. You got the buttons, you got on click, yeah. and you got a iframe that could take a new address. So when you click uh, your weather, it goes to the weather address. When you click on your flyers or whatever, it goes to an address that has flyers on it. It's a pretty simple start. Yep. But you got to change the frame each time you click the button. Right. So you got to know how to change, like you got to access that frame from the button, so you got to name the frame. Like you got to. So right now you got iframe on line 12, comma, which just makes a blank iframe. Yeah. Not so, okay. It's good there if you set it there, but if you're going to set it somewhere else, you got to give it a name so you know how to get back here. Right. So you got to go iframe, like you start with a name and you can... Uh, like weather? No, this is, the, this is the, the layer that has weather right now, but it's not always going to be weather because sometimes it's going to be flyer and you hit flyer. So it's just the frame. So at the beginning of line 12, give it an appropriate name like a web browser. Mean, maybe. How's that? Mean, mean, mean? sure. And go comma. Mean. There you go. Comma. Right. I can name it anyway. Yeah, you can change it later. Pretty simple. Now, the only problem is iframe, it doesn't understand that because it's like iframe what? It understood it if it was at the beginning because the beginning has special indications like you put, you start off with the type or name. Yeah. But as is with iframe and just comma, you gotta say iframe type or yeah. even tag if you want. Like Tag? Yeah, space tag. Uh, yeah, okay, works.
There's a couple words you can use. You can also use the word type or tag. Type? Maybe I'll do it into the video. Yeah, type. T Y P E. It's more than choosing with those words. If you if you can think of a better word, I can always add it to the list of possible. So what was the other one? Tag? Because it's an HTML tag and iframe is Alright, now you can go main dot source equals whatever inside those on right flex for each button. Now you're done with the iframe. It's named, so now we've got to look for the buttons that you're pressing. So look for uh, the flyers Weather. button. Flyers, here. Yeah, so that's where it is in the running code. Where is it in the Flyer. source code? Or yeah. inside the on click even. Just forget about the that stuff for now. Right there? Yeah. Go main. Same way you spelt it before. I mean like capitals and stuff, yeah. That's how you did it before. Go dot source. Or SRC, sorry. Equals space, I guess. Like that? Yeah. And then this is where you tell the new path to whatever flyer website you find. But no, I will just use that. Yeah, once you got the working program, we'll just use this one. Do I need brackets here? Brackets or a period at the end? The comma and the these things? Yeah, quotations. <sighs> or a period? Yeah, you can have a period at the end which will wrap it with quotations. Okay. With the weather, I gotta go back to weather. It'll be a similar process, similar line to 61 for all the buttons. Try adding a period to the end of that line just to show. Is it? Yeah. Or just how it gets rid of the quotations. That. Yeah. You don't even have to end with a slash for the website. But it doesn't change it, but it's not necessary. So that one is. Our line 16, it looks like you're setting a variable there and if you weren't inside of something that is expecting the word background there, mm -hmm. it would have just created a variable called background. But you're inside of a layer that ha and a style of that layer that has background as part of its continuation from that point. So there you're setting the background of the current layer. But what we've got to do is create a new variable that's not part of the, any style or layer, like so we can't name it left or top or width or background or background size. So we've got to make a variable and it has to be a unique name. So JavaScript and all the built-in stuff starts with lowercase letters. So if you start your variables with capital, mm -hmm. uh, it's not only more proper in the English type theme, it's a... Uh, won't conflict with JavaScript and other things. So make your variable similar to line 16, but 
and the job of this variable is to remember what Can button I call you it pressed. Like buttons or button pressed, or like it's going to remember what button was pressed. So that's the mission. You can name it whatever you want, but you should capitalize the first one just to show that it's your own, not JavaScript. Okay. Now you got to set it to a default value. Say like, uh, no, it's good. Oh, I guess it's good. Just go equals zero. Okay. Or false, maybe. Because you're going to have an if statement, and you're going to say if it's if there's something there, then uh, set it back to default. Okay. Now in your buttons, when you click, you're going to set button press to that button, and you use that using the word this. So you'll say button press equals this inside the on clicks. Where did I do that right here? No, button. that's just creating it and setting the default now in the on clicks, like line 26. Yeah. Like that's where it starts. Now this is where you would uh, update this variable right to here? the current, yeah. Similar except for instead of zero, you'd use the word this in small letters, which points to this uh, button press, like how you've written it up on line 17, yeah. equals this. Right here? Yeah. So that yeah now that works so when you press that button yeah that variable is going to remember that that button was pressed so the next time you press a button you can check to see what uh, button press was or like you can go button press dot style dot, like you can uh, set it back to its normal stuff it's not doing anything right now but on your next click it will like now it's just going to remember the last button you pressed, but the first time you press it, it doesn't have to hide the button you pressed before. Like they're all set to black. See how now they're kind of set to red? Yeah, yeah. So now we got to symbol of black. You got to do that for each on click, because you want this it to remember. Yeah, so right, right now, it's, on, yeah, it's only useful if that's in all the on clicks of all your buttons. And yeah, it should be. Maybe just do the next one for now, or the next button. Yeah. And then you can try them back and forth, and you'll see the effect. Oh, yeah. All right. So now when you hit every button, they just all just change to red or whatever. Yeah. Now what you do, so the first time you press any of the buttons, it's okay because they're all black and you want that one to turn red. But then when you hit the button the second time, you want the one you Oops. just had selected. Like so if you hit the shop, Turns red. So yeah. far, so good. Yeah. Now, when you hit classifieds, shot or subree or the one you just clicked should turn back to its original color. Right. So, when you do hit the second one, that's where you got to say if pressed button is not zero, like meaning that it's not the it's not the first time you press the button. It's the second time because it's zero the first time. Yeah. So it's one. So yeah, above. I mean, like, it has to be above where you set it to this. You need an if statement okay. inside inside the on click. Oh yeah. Say line twenty six, but above that line though. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Capital I for if. And you can say button press. But it has to be proper capitals and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
If you want to sound it out properly, there is a shortcut, but you can say is not zero because your default is zero. Mm -hmm. They help explain that. <coughs> I is, I is, I is, not N O T, zero, colon, other type of colon, enter. Now, so now it's going to do that body, like where you are right now. Yeah. Not the first time you click, but the second time. Like, I mean, it's a, it's only going to do that if the it it remembers the last thing you clicked on. It's not doing anything yet, but where your blinker is, or like in line 27, that's where you'll say button press dot style dot uh, color. Right here. Yeah. Button press. Dot style. Yep. Dot color equals black with the period at the end, or, or if you want to wrap in quotations, you gotta have a space in it. Okay, which one? Uh, that's button zero, eh? Okay, yeah, so that's login. So try uh, shop or whatever. Okay, now try login. See if it, right. see how it removes. The weather goes back to black. Yeah, no, it's a really No, because you've only applied that to one button, that if statement. If you apply that if statement to every button now, they should all work. What can be a word for weather? Then? Oh, it'll, it'll change what it was. When you click on login, because that's the one we just adjusted, yeah. login checks the variable of what you hit last, which happened to be weather, and it sets its color back to black. So it's the login that's correcting what you clicked on previously. Why is that linked to weather? Not particularly weather. You hit shop, it'll do the same thing there. See it's red? See oh, that's supposed to work there. Oh, it might be the way you're toggling these well, things too. Would. Yeah, well, see, like you, you're also changing the color too. With if you're like you're toggling them back and forth. Oh yeah. So we got to correct that too. Oh, yeah, it did turn black. See, it's red. We just said turn black. Yeah. See, somebody was red before. See. Okay. So. If it's red. You can turn black. Okay. Yeah. Well, that one didn't turn black. Yeah. Maybe we're missing the equals this and that one. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it. This slide here? Yeah. Oh, this one. But now you have them toggling in a different way, like the if that's in there with all your functions or your, your events, it could be adjusted as well. So it's red, it's black. So yeah, red, it's black. Yeah. Red, it's black. The value of a variable. Just means memory. But it just does the last one. Though. It's like computer memory. But if they all did it, it wouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah, that's right. They all need that extra if statement. Actually, yeah, it might work out. Wait, which thing is it? Up here more. Yeah, it's on the uh, first one here. Zero, but name zero. 27, 26 and 7. Right above your... Got an if that's better. Yep. Just hit enter.
And you don't, you're not stuck to... Uh, just changing the color, you can do other things to it as well. So no point setting it black, because it doesn't exist yet. So now if this equals this... This is just like uh, pointing to the layer, so you can go this dot style dot color. But I set it up where you kind of start inside of this. You don't have to write the word this all the time. But if you look at JavaScript, you'll see a lot of this dot whatever everywhere. So now it's not zero now. No, it's this. Yeah, it, this is it's pointing to this button. In this case, why? So it's the button. Yeah. Whatever you click, yeah, the color goes red. Now why? Well, when I click somewhere else, that goes back to zero. So zero equals. Yeah. Well, look, they have the on click looks the same everywhere else. But imagine that as the next button you click. Yeah. Line twenty-seven. It is zero, so it is black. Well, it's, no, it's not zero this time. No, but every it was. It's zero the first time, yeah. but then the second time it's not zero. It's the previous button. Well, it's zero now because I click here. That one be zero. It's back to zero. Right? If I click here, classifieds turns to zero. No, classifieds is always changing from one this to another this. It's only zero before you click on any of them. Oh, so now it's okay. Zero is just the default. Yeah. It's just. So now they're all zero. Yeah, now they're all zero. So now, now it's this. Yeah, of that button. So it's the weather button. Yeah. But we could do this one. Now it's all well, that button. Is this button zero? Wait, wait. Yeah, button zero. Because <laughs> you can't go button dot or like button press dot style if button press is zero. Like zero dot style doesn't mean anything. Where did I do that button press dot style? Why do I do that? If it's not zero. Yeah, if it's not zero, it's then zero. it's going to be an object of the last this, or the last button. Okay, everything zero. So line 28 does not happen the first time. But line 29 does happen, like it's not inside diff. Yeah. So button equals this when I push it, right? Yeah. So, so that's what the button equals, right? Yeah. The memory thing that we called button press now is pointing to the login button. Because we need to change that red login button right now back to black when we hit something else. And when we hit something else, it'll look exactly like that. It'll ask the same question. Is button press the memory thing? Is it not zero? Not <laughs> so it's, it turns red just because I I clicked on it. You can change the question into something that makes more sense, like it's a double negative there sort of thing. You can get rid of the double negative by saying is the button press an object sort of thing. Instead of saying is it not zero. So as long as it's zero, it's black, right? So how does it go back to black? Oh, wait. So now it's red, and button press equals login logout button. So now if you clicked on uh, shop, button clicks on that stuff's not too important. Well, it's that's just kind of changing the text. That's the text. Yeah. So really, we're just interested in the three top line, four top lines. So on the next button you press, it's going to go through the same question. It's going to say, "Is button press zero or not, or whatever?" Like it's asking that sort of thing. Yeah. So no, it's not. Yeah, it's not because so you had login this. before. Yeah. So you got to set that one back to black, and then you got to update the button press that when now the new one. How does it know to turn the other one back to black? Oh, the line twenty-seven is the the little glitchy. Yeah, you got to remove the lines like one twenty-one, one seventeen. These ones color yeah. black. Yep. You made the real version, but you still have the old version in there. And all the functions that are in the apps.
Our collar equals red should be after button pressed because if it's the same button twice, you know, it's going to set it to red, but then the last button you pressed was the button you're pressing. So it should be in here? No. Uh, like say in line 64. Or just as long as it's after line 63. Here? Yeah. That's right. Amateur mistake. Here? Yep. Because it's your line lines inside the if statement that are resetting it. So you gotta reset it and then uh, force it to equal red no matter what. Line 26 is wrong there. Right here. Because that should be after the if. Yeah, I knew there was something wrong with that. But. And it should go here? Right here. Yeah. As long as it's after the line that has color equals black. Actually, yeah. Not only you don't need it. It's Pause glitches if it's there. Pretty much the way you want it. 